Hey everyone, good evening. As you saw on the intro, I said, stand by for some updates. I'll tell you what, this uh, podcasting is uh, pretty difficult. It's people who are content creators on YouTube, and you know what, if I had a hat on, I'd take it off right now. Um, I, I just think it's amazing all that goes into making sure it's a good product, making sure that you have good audio, visual. Um, hey, Chelsea. So I thought I'd come online. I'm, I'm testing a lot of the setup. I'm kind of looking at it, freaking out, it seems like. So trying to get the tweak just right, get all the equipment, all the audio for the podcast. And also to announce that tomorrow we're not going to have the podcast. Um, we got some people spread around the country that we have participate in it, and they're not going to be able to tomorrow. So. Uh, Mm, not tomorrow. Sorry, guys. Um, but uh, we will be back next Friday, 10 a.m. Uh, and I, will, I really do hope that if you're watching and you see this, that you will take an interest in going in and the discussion. And if you're online right now, I don't have anything particular to talk about. Um, but I'm looking at the chat so I can uh, respond and like Chelsea, she's already popped up on there. And, you know, one thing I've learned about all this stuff is uh, the old adage they keep saying is test, 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 test. I was watching a podcast the other day, and I, it was just amazing. Um, all of a sudden, everybody's sitting around the table. They're talking. It's going online. All of a sudden, one goes, I, I can't hear you. You can hear me. And it just was, it was just, it, it felt good because I know, I know the feeling. and. They just make it look so easy, don't they? Uh, it's just amazing how quick um, that it's things go bad and all the technical things. And the audio, the audio. I want to make sure that I do a good uh, job. I want to make it to where it's enjoyable, but it's something that you can listen to and it's not... And, and so that you can enjoy it. Um, it's a, uh, I think it's an important tool as well for us today to be able to communicate with one another, and especially when it comes to God. And today, you know, there's so many, there's so many things that are negative out there today, and and attacking the moral values that Christians have. Uh, I think it's time for us to stand up. I think it's time for us to stand up and um, and speak up for our values, what we think. Uh, Chelsea uh, said, uh, it's okay, Ron, I understand. I joined, though, if you did it anyway, at least on here. My camera broke in our house fire last year on my laptop. Oh, man. Uh, we had water damage like two years ago. Um, yeah, not this freeze, so I can feel for the people in Texas, and they had the, the freeze happen and displaced, and man, what a disaster. So. I can't imagine a fire. Uh, that's just as devastating when you start losing all your items. And you don't realize it. But <clears throat> I'm trying to make it a good, um, enjoyable podcast and put it on Podbean as well so that we can upload it. I have a lot of big plans, of course, that what I want to do and with your help. And a lot of people have helped. They've got some good input in how we're doing, what we're doing. And uh, so I hope we can continue to make it grow. I hope that we can get this to where we can have more opportunity to engage through the chat. And, and then I can learn how to manipulate all this that's going on, um, looking at the monitor, the mixer, and the chat. Um, so Chelsea says, the funny part is God saved the house while I was praying hardcore. But I didn't pray for those, for the hose water did me. Oh, yeah, uh, you know, firefighters, good at fighting fire, but eh, water damage. Uh, Karen, we know Karen, she just, I think she just got back into her house. She's been out of her house for over, I think it was a year, almost a year before she got back into it. And if you, you, you looked at the, the actual damage, from fire, burn, destruction, and then you have smoke that goes throughout the house, and then 
the firefighters coming in with it. Yeah, you know, we pray, and but you weren't injured, so that was that's pretty awesome. But coming back to you know the idea of the purpose of the podcast, I want it to be simple, something that we can look in the Bible and just come together and and read the Bible and have a you know just a conversation, conversation about how we can find out about God and um, that we can see what we can do to improve our lives. Um, that's, that, I think, is what we need to do to help also our families, to help our society, so that people can see something besides all the mean and negativity that's flying around out there. Uh, it's it's so destructive to to everyone. Our health is impacted by it. Um, it's just it's time to reset ourselves spiritually and focus in on the the serenity and the peace that we can obtain by being with God and learning the way that He wants us to live will help us obtain the peace and the joy that we can have. And it's not corny. And it's not some vain philosophy, but it's true values, true things that God has blessed us with that we can we can mimic, we can bring into our lives, and we can share it, share it with others around us, share it by showing genuine love, genuine forgiveness and forbearance, and all those things that, that is lacking um, in our families. Um, so I. I don't have, like I said, I don't have a whole lot to talk about. I'm just kind of capturing some information and learning. So um, if you want to jump in and, and provide something, I know, I don't know who all's out there. I'm also watching kind of just the video on YouTube and Facebook because I don't get to watch it and monitor it and see how it's doing. I can't listen to the audio because that would create a real crazy, um, yeah, echo and craziness. but. But when it starts to freak out here, I want to check out and see. Uh, I should be streaming over even on the Sandia Church of Christ webpage, which I also want to know that, um, you know, no matter where you're at, who you are, uh, share. Please subscribe. Uh, When we get 100, we're at 84. It's taken us a while to creep up there, but we're almost there. If we can get to 100 subscribers. We were able to get our own little address that's specific and much simpler for people to be able to find us and make it better, improve it. And I, I'm excited. I really am. I'm kind of out of my league in a way, but I think the need for it is greater. Um, help one another. Help one another in, in our conversations with all the inability to be close to one another. Um, let's use this. Let's use this as a tool. <clears throat> Chelsea, thank you. Indeed, I hope you don't give up. I'm not. We need people like you to speak up. I'm grateful that you were on. It's much appreciated. And well, the technology. <laughs> yes. Um, well, and helping is just coming on. Thank you. Um, coming on right now and and giving me some input, giving me some ability to learn how to keep my eye on the chat and be able to respond to it and how to engage. I've learned a lot by just watching other podcasters and um, I'm I'm not going to be, I'm not going to tell you I'm the top of my game when our top is, uh, or the best there is, I guess what I'm grasping for when it comes to try to be the best public speaker uh, or actor or stuff like that. I'm, no, I'm not. But I, I'll give you my heart. I'll give you what I have and genuinely be honest with you. Um, and there's a lot more I don't know than I do know. So but I, I hope you'll help me. Um, now look at this audio here. It looks like we're kind of blasting it a little bit, clipping. That's what they call it anyway. I'm going to try to tweak that a little bit so I'm not, there we go, well, maybe that's a little better, not trying to blast you out. And it, it, what's crazy is with the podcast, I have callers come in 
And we worked so hard at trying to get the audio established and everything sounding really good. And then another caller comes in and it's like the audio changes. And then we start getting all this echoing going on between each other. So, uh, the, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> Becky, Lacey, um, Derek, Ryan, you guys have put up with a lot. <clears throat> and it's taken a lot to learn how to set up on your side, uh, on the side of participating. I also have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have the ability to bring in people on Zoom. We can incorporate it into the discussion as well as in the chat. We can be as big as we want, you know, when it comes to producing this. Um, so, <clears throat> no, I, I have some big dreams for it, and I hope that and my dream is for you uh, to be able to grow and to learn and share. You know, I think that's kind of one of the things that's so frustrating with me is that for some reason people think that because you're the teacher, you're the preacher, you're the one that's doing the talking that you have, you have this higher level of knowledge. I have the higher level of knowledge of what I want to talk about. I have the higher level of knowledge of the class that I just prepared, but you catch me off guard. Chelsea, you asked a question, you know, a while back and I was sitting there looking at it, and I'm like, oh, do I know the answer? I'm, uh, you know, I looked at it, and I gave you the best I had, and that's, and that's okay. And you ask questions that sometimes I don't understand, and so I have to think about them, but let's, don't, don't be embarrassed. Let's, you know, don't be embarrassed. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm going to try to make sure I read your comment and before I respond back and get it together. Um, looks like we're still maintaining a pretty good stream on the Facebook and eh, I don't know what's going on on the YouTube. Yeah, and of course we're already starting to get some people trying to troll us. Ain't gonna get me. Ain't gonna get it. Ain't gonna get it. Ain't gonna buck. Um... Yeah, people, you, you need a moderator, really. I, I get it, you know, watching some of the podcast creators talking about how you, you have somebody who just works it, so you keep these people from coming in and, and trying to bomb you and, and embarrass you or make some really gross comments. Um, Yeah, okay. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good there. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm out of my coffee, which I shouldn't be drinking coffee anymore right now. It's kinda of late at night. I need to go home, go get some some meals. There it goes again. Kind of get a little flaky on that on looking at this. Yeah, some of those bots. I you know, I heard one podcast creator talking about how um that they can be silly, you know, that they can sit and kind of, one of them would ask them about the, the furniture in, in the background or something. And, and then some of them just keep bombing you and bombing you, you know, and they get gross. And so I'm glad that we're able to control at least what's going out on the live stream. Trying to block some of these. Um, Trying to keep up on the chat, Chelsea. Yeah, like I said, this is uh Yeah, I you know, I think that's what's important is we we just talk Bible. We talk. Um and, and I I want I want to be able for us to talk and make it real. Make it make it practical, make it something that is not a theory. Um make it something that we're able to apply it into my life, make a difference in who I am, and then and ultimately it'll help me be a better person, but it'll also help those around me to 
when you know I'm not giving out that negativity and that stuff as well. And then maybe that'll cause people to want to know more about my faith, about who I, how did I become who I am? And um, so, yeah, it's always kind of awkward when you're, I watch people on it and I say, how do you keep it going? You know, how do you keep, keep talking? And, you know, a lot of this is just, like I said, I'm just testing, testing, testing. And, so I can also get to used to using all this um, technology that's around me, and but uh, I think we're pretty good. I think um, there's always it always seems like that right when I go to wrap up or right after I wrap up, then all of a sudden uh, I have people making comments and it's like, "Well, what happened? I'm sorry, I missed you." And get the comment in time. I tell you what, so much. Yeah, I would. I strongly encourage it. Um, Get yourself ready. You know what happened with with me, and is the fact that because of COVID and the isolation and separation from people, it's kind of forced it upon me. And um, on top of already teaching, you know, five classes, four classes a week, and then it's kind of like sewing a trying to put together a parachute while you're falling through the sky. Hope you can get it all sewed up before you hit the ground is you're you're in action in other words you don't have time chelsea like you know to be able to prepare things if you're putting together and you're wanting to do a podcast and learning the technology and all the equipment at the same time so yeah it's, uh, but it's coming together yeah it's coming together Yeah, you know, it is kind of, you have to have a knowledge base of whatever you're going to discuss and whatever you're going to produce, um, but don't hold back, you know, and there's there's a point you can, you can always feel inadequate, that you're never going to be able to achieve a level of the knowledge of the creation or whatever you're trying to create, uh, and that's why you have to have humility, you know, and just you're not going to have everything there is about that topic at one time. So just don't act like you do know it all and and be honest and sincere. People so far have been pretty forgiving, you know, about it. Still kind of struggling with it synchronizing um the the streaming between the software production software that i'm using and getting it every time consistently and not i don't know trying to integrate it that's one of the biggest things that's bugging me now um but it's um it's cuz I, I i hate going live and having this misinformation and and labeling issues that that's one of the things <laughs> yeah, watching me yeah. well thank you um you learn as much about what i'm struggling with and that's good you know hopefully you can share it uh I think at different times you always feel like you're over your head. 
there, you know, there's a lot of people. It wouldn't take much. You could just blow my socks off. Some people out there and their their Bible knowledge. Um, that's why I want to. I'd encourage you to get you involved, get people involved in in sharing and having that discussion, so that you know we. To me, that's why I call the podcast uh, "Searching for the Church." It's in shape of the scriptures. Not in shape of some ideology created by a modern person, um, but shaped by the New Testament. Because if we look around at all the different ideologies that have been shaped by people's interpretation of the Bible, which one's right? And, you know, salvation is very individual. Um, and we're gonna we're not saved by churches. The church isn't gonna save you. You what's gonna save you is your relationship with Jesus Christ, and not some doctrine at a location or a building. It's gonna be your personal relationship with Christ and following what He teaches. So let's let's cut the middleman out. That's what I want to do. Cut the middleman out. Let's just go to the Scripture uh, and read it. Now. You know, a lot of times, you know, I be, get confronted with people saying, well, there's problems with the New Testament. There's problems with the Bible. Well, and I have to ask this question first. And whenever I hear that is, do you believe there's a God? Most people will say yes, they, they believe in God. Um, and so if you believe in God, then what is this God? Is this God limited? No, not limited at all. He has all knowledge, he has all power, he has all presence, he's everywhere, he's able to do anything he wants, he's able to, you know, create, destroy. Hmm. And so knowing that that's who God is, then I have to have confidence that he has made it to where we can understand him, no matter how many thousands of years apart, but that even today, 2,000 years plus after the cross, after the apostles have walked this earth, we can know what he wants. He's not a father who has to just keep repeating himself. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He's provided the proof, and now you're going to have to have a heart that wants to find it, and you're going to have to have confidence that if he is God, and he is all-powerful, and he is communicating. He has the capability. And if man has been able to corrupt, if you believe that a man has been able to corrupt the Bible and pervert it, then I tell you there is no God. There's no God. There's no, there's no middle ground. There's no way you can say there's a God, and then man has messed up his word, and that now we can't figure it out. Oh, well, then the fallback is, oh, well, then... We have people that are speaking with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, the, okay, then uh, which Holy Spirit do we listen to? Because I tell you what, there's a bunch out there and they're all speaking different languages. They, they're coming out with different languages. They're coming out with different ideologies, different plans to be right with God. And, and, and again, so we have to, where can we go to find and feel confident that this is what God wants me to know. And it's the Bible. It's the Bible itself. It's the way God had intended it for us to be. If you are a critic and that's the heart you have, then maybe you're not loving God the way you need to. You know, to have the confidence that that is his voice. That is his voice. Um, and, and from that, I can understand it too. That's the other thing is, it, we can all understand it. It's not complicated. The gospel was a very simple gospel. In Galatians, Paul said, I've, basically he reveals the idea that he had given them everything they needed to know. There was nothing new. He said, even if I come back and I change something, in Galatians chapter 1, you know, let me be accursed. If I change something. So today we see a lot of things that don't match. They, had, they, they don't match with what, is written in the Bible. To me, that's a change, which means then it's wrong, it's incorrect. But it's, it's what we have. And he said, 
this mystery that's been revealed to us is something that we can understand. And so we don't need um, anything but a heart. Heart and the ability to read, of course. But beyond that, we, we can all understand the same simplicity of that gospel that was preached thousands of years ago. And so that's kind of my, I guess, my desire, my theme, my goal for this is to look at some, probably some very um, difficult things that we have to struggle with. I understand, Chelsea, what you mean. Yeah. You're right. You know, sometimes um, everyone's all over the place, and I don't get it. I don't get it. And it, and every one of us, including myself, you know, we come to learning something with preconditions, things that we have already been exposed to in our environment and our education, and it changes the way we approach whatever we're learning that's new. Um, so it, to me, it's, we have to be careful with the preconceived ideas, prejudices that we bring forward in trying to find the truth and make sure that they're not interfering with what we need to know. It's important, isn't it? I mean, we're trying to get to heaven. We're trying to gain eternal life and be able to accomplish that. Uh, it's the most paramount thing, I think, that we should want. And in doing that, I think that we need to be very honest. And honesty means humility, which means I don't know it all, and I'm still struggling, just like everybody else, to come to that greater understanding. And that's what we're trying to do, isn't it? Um, Yeah, I think so too, Chelsea. There's, <laughs> I hate to use it. It's it, oh, it just incites me when I hear this. We talk about fake this, fake news, fake news, fake news. Ooh man, isn't there a bunch of fake Bible or Bible out there? Uh, that I don't like that. Not fake Bible, fake interpretations. All over the place, been all over the place, been there for a long time, right? Um, it's a, it's all over the place. So I had no plan for this at all. This is all completely improv. I mean, I, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go live. I'm not going to have the class in the morning. Um, I don't have half the stuff set up the way I normally do to get all prepared for class, but I think it's a great opportunity for me to at least help share with you what, I, what I'm trying to do and trying to express um, the essence of who I am as well, you know, so that you, you can understand who I am and that um, I'm not mean-spirited. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. Uh, I want us all to go to heaven, you know. It's, we're just people helping people uh, get to heaven. You know, Chelsea, you said that, you know, it's exciting. You'd be surprised how much people want this and to sit for hours sometimes just to hear real talk and thought. You know, I was, I was talking today on the phone with a couple of Christians. We're talking, and um, I don't know if they're watching, Lacey and Danny, and we were just talking about some, you know, it was Bible things. It was some things that, you know, we confront, we have to deal with. Uh, and I actually had said this is one of the goals was to have that type of a conversation. The way that uh, we were sitting there just talking on the phone. And I said, that's exactly what one of the ways I want to use this uh, podcast. Not only to have a little more formal studying of the scripture and to take, you know, head on some difficult topics about salvation. Um, how to worship God and 
you know, all the morality issues that are going to cause some hot topic, but also just conversation. And that, that's one thing I want to do is I want to set it up up here. I would love to have it where I could set up in this little studio I've created and get some more equipment like this stuff and where we could have some just candid conversations. I, I think, uh, and, you, and I do know, I do know there are people and that's why, that's why I'm doing it, Chelsea, you know, because I know there's a lot of people that are hungry for the truth. There's a lot of uh, Hollywood religion, you know, that's, that's show. Um, and yeah, that's... <laughs> And I get a little excited, as you can tell. Um, and, and it's hard for me because I don't, I struggle with wanting to be exposed like this. Um, it is, it's, because you have no idea. You really don't. And, and who all's out there and, and there's kind of that embarrassment. It's one thing to have a group of people that you know and you're comfortable with and sitting around eyeball to eyeball and, and talking to them, but to sit and Look at the one eyeball looking back at you and talking to this, this big thing that's in your face. Um, <laughs> it's a little unnerving at times. Um, so I, I do. I hope more and more people so will join the conversation, join the study, and uh, grow. Grow with us. Grow with me, I'll grow with you, and, and see what we can do to improve our spiritual lives, reshape who we are first. I can't fix you. I can't. You know, it took me many years of growing spiritually to figure out uh, all the people that I thought were so messed up as Christians, and they need to do this, or they need to do that, and get so you know, uh, angry, and I stopped one day, and it finally dawned on me. I thought, you know... I can't fix them. <laughs> and by me feeling that way, what was I doing? I was judging them. And then it dawned on me, well, you know what? I can fix me. Fix me. And maybe through fixing me, it will help them to see that I have the ability to change and they too have that ability, right? That sounds perfect, Chelsea says. Really fun. It's exactly what I'm looking for and get excited for. It's nice to know and finding out I can have that here. Now, just if I can. <laughs> You're more courageous than you think. Don't be scared. I have yet to bite anybody or hurt anyone, you know, purposely. Yeah, it is, huh? Um, looking at a camera, uh, looking at that camera and kind of trying to figure it out. You know, you're looking at it, awkward. In, yeah, and on Zoom too. You know, and that's another tool. And that's kind of, I think, what helped, helped me to get used to it. I started with Zoom and that's, that's what I did, yeah. Hey, Chelsea, don't you ever apologize for your spelling. I'm not judging at all because I am terrible, terrible with grammar and <laughs> spelling. So your typos don't bother me. And now, and now I may struggle to read through it. So you just keep chatting back like you've been doing, like you've always done, and help me if I'm kind of not understanding. I think you'll probably look at my face as I'm reading it, and then you can go, oh, and then let me know, help me out on this. It's a real talk. We'll talk about God. We'll talk about our lives. We'll talk about the struggles that we have in our lives and taking our faith and making it actionable, not a theory, not something that we have out there that's, um, it's, you know, we separate, we, we compartmentalize our church, our faith, and then we walk out and we leave the building and we do what? Driving home, somebody pulls out in front of you and you rah, and you just you know start going crazy and angry and and maybe use some choice words and wave with them, wave at them with one finger, and then you go, "Whoa, I just left church. What happened? What happened? I know I felt that way. It's taken a long time, you know I mean, 
But that's the thing that we have to do is take what we're learning from the Bible and practice it. It's just like a football player getting a playbook and he just looks at it, looks at it, goes, yeah, okay, I go this direction, I throw this block. And then, you know, and every time he just comes and picks it up, but he never gets out there on the field, never gets out there and actually executes and tries to go, oh, okay, I get it now. That's what we have to do. We have to execute. We have to go out there, carry out what we're doing. Well, I've been on a whole lot longer than I ever imagined that I would be, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I hope that if you're going to watch this in the future, hopefully it'll be helpful to get you to know who I am, where I'm coming from, and what my ideas are on this podcast. And join us, please, and subscribe, please, so that we can try to make ourselves a little more accessible to others that want to join us and and gain from it too. Kelsey says, I have good friends, but I'm tired of feeling awkward when I thank God or tell them how he has helped me lately. My deep God talk is only with my husband, which is great, but I feel like I have to hide. Oh, I know. I know. Um, Well, you ought to see people's expressions on their faces change whenever they find out and they find out that I'm, I'm a preacher, you know, that. Um, I teach the Bible that I'm a Christian and that I do it for a living. And um, it's like, you know, I almost have to give a, a, you know, kind of a disqualifier and say, look, don't, just because I'm going to tell you that I'm a preacher, don't get all nervous on me. Don't get all weird. Treat me like you have. I mean, it's not like I haven't heard bad language. Okay, I don't like bad language. Uh, nasty jokes and stuff like that, but I still am a person and I can have fun. I've had more fun being a Christian than not being a Christian. My life before, uh, not as much fun. We can laugh. We can have sense of humor, sarcasm, and it doesn't mean I'm judging you because you're not going to change or you choose not to. That's your right. It's free will. Um, But it doesn't mean I don't want you to be a part of my life. I still want to enjoy your friendship and whatever we have together, mountain biking and things. I have a lot of great friends. We don't agree on a lot of things. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to hate you or that I want to disassociate from you. I don't. So don't treat, don't treat me that way. I don't want to have to hide my faith. I'm not going to. I'm not going to throw it in your face. I'm not going to beat you up with it. But I'm not going to hide it. And I hope that you're not uncomfortable with me not hiding it. Uh, you know, for the longest time in America, I, you know, Christians were able to hide on the sidelines and just kind of stay like, like the game of life is, is going on on the field of life down there and all this immoral things. And Christians would sit up there and sit on the sideline and go, well, you know, I, I'm on the sideline. I'm, not, I'm in the bleachers and I don't have to deal with it. I don't have no problem. You can do what you want. I believe what you want. I believe what I want. And just stay on the sidelines. And uh, I'm telling you right now, There's no sidelines. They're gone. They're not. People are pulling us into the conversation and and getting us to, you know, stand out with our moral values and 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 judge us, criticize our moral values. And it just reminds me of the prophet that says, you know, we're living in a time where, you know, we're starting to call good evil and evil good. Something very perverted with that. We're flipping. Everything seems to be flipping. And, and good people need to talk about God. Good people need to start expressing their faith and showing, not being afraid. That's what the Roman society did to Christians. That's what they had to live with in the first century. And they stood up. And some of them lost their lives over it. But we, we, we have to. We love our country, we love our family, then we love God first and foremost, then share your faith through life. Share your faith through first and foremost, live it. That's, that's the other thing that gets thrown in our face all the time, isn't it, about the hypocrisy, saying, oh, you, you, know, you, you, you say you're Christian, but you turn around and you hate. 
say you're Christian, but you don't forgive, which most people don't understand the concept of true forgiveness anyway. So that aggravates me to no end as well. Chelsea says, I'm working on my mouth. <laughs> but yes, I feel like God gave my individuality back. Where people say believing in God takes it away. That could be further from the truth. Life has been an adventure. And, and I'm more at peace than I've ever been. And, I, and it, it really does. It, it just kind of breaks my heart when I watch people that become so uh, absorbed with the negativity and it's impacting their health. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm a little more lonely because of what's going on, but my peace is in God. My peace is not in the world. So the world has no peace. Um, this is just a reflection of something that's been under the surface of our society for a very long time. And it's starting to come out. It's starting to confront even harsher. But it's been there. It's been a battle uh, between the two different ideologies of moral values. And now they're starting to come into conflict and be exposed. But that turmoil is, is never peaceful of the world. But I can supersede what's happening. I can get above it and achieve a different level. And it's still love life. Because this world is ours. God created this world for his children, for all of us. And all people receive a blessing, whether they believe in him or not. But this is our world. This is our time to breathe and have this body and stuff because we're going to move on. We're going to move to a spiritual level that's going to be much greater, much greater. So I, I love this life. I love what I have. No matter what's raging on around me, I can obtain a peace and the tranquility that, unfortunately, People that are caught up in the wisdom of the world, they're not, they, they don't have it. And it's tearing us apart. But it was ripping slowly. It really has been coming along. Um, I'm a little off on sharing my comments. Sorry about that. Missed that one. Uh, Chelsea said it really stinks. So I'm excited to finally find people that I can be open with God. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's what it's about, is that, you know what, openly and yet personally, we can connect and share. Yeah. Chelsea, yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's lie, like God said in Isaiah 28. He takes the veil off, and it seems to show you all the raging around us. But we have a rock to anchor us. Yeah, absolutely. This is pretty crazy. You know, um, I only had the intent of coming on and, you know, kind of doing some testing and, uh, you know, and letting you know that tomorrow's class is not going to happen. Um, and, Got me on a roll. So, in some good conversation. If you're if you're out there right now, and you're on, hop in. You know, say something. Say something, and I'll share it with everybody, and we'll see. Chelsea, this life night turned out to be a podcast in itself. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. You 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 know how long it took me. Um, sitting here and thinking about, well, how do I do this? I need to test this. I need to tell people, you know, that the podcast isn't going to happen tomorrow. Um, and then I, I'm trying to configure it because I have a different configuration on the way that I run it um, during the podcast on Fridays. And so I, I just, yeah, yeah, turned into a podcast, hasn't it? <laughs> turned into a podcast in itself. So that's cool. That's cool. I, that that actually has made my day. It, it it really has because I've been in this here this place all by myself and these you know studying and and then putting it together and worrying and about am I going to get this right? If I if I learn how to get the audio just right and then uh, okay, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and just start it. Get the guts to live stream and see how it's working. 
So it's really been uplifting to see, you know, to have the discussion that we're having and refreshing as well and encouraging. Thank you. Um, yeah, we will. We'll have a lot more. This is just the beginning of some great conversations that we're going to have as we go along. Um, I watch other podcasters and they literally jump up. They jump on live, have random, real conversations. So you may be on to something doing it this way. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've, I've been told I got a gift to gab. So um, it's so funny. You know, I sit there and try to come up with something formal. And then um, just do it, you know. Just do it. And the, I think the harder I try to make something perfect, especially when it comes to a conversation, or because I, 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 I want to make sure that it's that I'm the one, I'm not the one that hinders somebody from coming to a better understanding of God's word. It's always been my fear that when I'm preaching a sermon or teaching a Bible class, that somehow I'm going to be the problem. Not the message. I mean, not the you know, not God's word because it's it's sure, it's true, it's exact. But the way I present it, the way I may phrase it, the tone in which I use, I just my prayer is, don't let me be the problem that I don't present it in a loving, kind way that people will be offended and turn off and not listen to it. Now, if People are offended because of the truth. I'm not bothered by that. It doesn't bother me. I will stand up every time and say, no apology, because God's truth is the only way that we get this peace, peace between us and God, and the peace that we can live a beautiful life now. So I will not apologize for the truth. I will apologize if I incorrectly present it. That's what I don't want to do. And that's why, you know, jumping on live like this is a little unnerving. You know, you have to think a little bit more. Um, and, and the other crazy thing is, you know, a lot of times I worry because I, I hear about people being shut down on YouTube and not saying the right thing about uh, certain medications. <laughs> and I don't want to get political. Don't. And I'm not. I'm not going to do that, but you know what is just as controversial is moral values. If I start calling it out, you know, and I will, I'm not going to shy back. I'm not going to change my view and the way I present it when it comes to you know the moral issues that we're going to be dealing with. I, I'm not. I'm not going to say it in a hateful way. I don't want to do that. It's not my purpose to offend. Like I said. I want to express what God has expressed in his word. Because that's the only way we'll be able to do that is to have that. So, um, Yes. Yeah, there's a difference in there. You say, and people will watch when you stick to the truth and facts. And that's what is amazing. That's why I say we can understand the Bible. That we don't need some high education and some fantastic cryptic abilities to look deep into this, and somebody else has got to come along and teach me um, it, that we can do it. That and people see liars. You can you know you watch them and you can see the the hypocrisy in what they're saying and what they're doing, and 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 so the honesty comes through. You can't hide it. It's just like the fruits of the spirit. You know, you can't hide the fruit on your spiritual tree. People can see it. It's exposed. You can talk all day long about the fruits of the Spirit, but until you're living it and it's coming out in its fruit, it's produced, and people see it, then they know, ah, yes, he is long-suffering, he is kind. You know, all those things are the fruit of the Spirit that we can say, yes, it's not because he talks it, it's because he walks it. It's what he's doing. Yeah, 
Kelsey says, yeah, politics is its own thing. But morals, but the morals that we have been overlooked because of them are out of hand these days. And the, and the reminder is needed. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a part of what I want to do, too is in a sense of us while we're searching to find the Bible shaped by Scripture is to help us improve ourselves, but in that is to speak up. Speaking up and letting people see that we're not haters, that, you know, the, the Romans even had come to the point where they were looking at Christians and saying they're a better citizen. The Apostle Paul was talking about being a good citizen first. And yet, so, you know, after they beat us up in our society, you know, drag us around on our moral values, what's funny is it's going to come back around. And they're going to look and go, wait a minute, I, they're not so ugly. They're not violent. They're, they're a whole different people. And that, that's what I want. I want to be around those that are kind and loving and gentle and forgiving. I don't want to be around the ones that are throwing rocks and destroying things. <laughs> Chelsea says, we need to make a t-shirt that says, be a Paul, right? Be a Paul. I agree. You know, and, and I got another t-shirt that I've come up with is, you know, sometimes it takes more than a hug. You know, there's, there's more than just, you know, it's just like saying, I love you, you know, and it, there's, it takes more. It, it takes a commitment. It takes more action than just hugging or shaking a hand and things. And it's the superficial part of people's relationships. And it's, oh, oh, and Facebook and all these different what, platforms have created that superficialness. Yeah. So, Hope we can help. Hope we can do it. Well, I am going to go ahead and bug out. So um, I hope that we'll see you again. And yeah, maybe I will continue this kind of randomness and um, come online and start talking and see if I can provoke a conversation that's goodness and joy. And we'll, um, we'll see you guys later. Thanks, Chelsea. We'll be in touch. <laughs>